My whole life they didn't want to. Taste the motherfucking free. You know what I'm saying? Mean? What you gonna do when you're gonna go? Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You just gotta keep your hands pushed. You know what I'm saying? Me, the way I work is I keep operating. Because I never fail. You know what I'm saying? I fall. I pick I myself back up. I keep going. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm the mark. Fuck what happens. You, know? you can't That's take me. The There's no force it's in this world that can fucking cancel my energy. Fuck it. You know? Let's go. Yo, yo, he what? I'm back. Already twisted, no need to introduce Get lifted one line Good could rap, milk could kill a cancer Like pills pop the general, it's arsenic Retarded to the flame, go against the grain Feel the same numb pain, fuck shots, grab the bottle Getting hollow, run for cover like the day after tomorrow You can say it's chill, life's cold, but keep it real Undercover, lost the battle, but still Won the war, dark side of the force Mind trick, transform, Jedi John Connor Doing what you wanna, puffing nails Hydroponics, getting lost in the madness Sustained at the level that you practice On my own planet while I bring it back to Earth Crashing like a comet and I'm coming feet first Fuck that, already spent and it ain't no apple pie Try to tell the truth when you live it in a lie Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tills from the Chris. I'm your host, Chris White, mucosa melanoma survivor, thriver, and advocate in my podcast. We talk about anything and everything because we leave it all out on the table. On today's show, uh, it is episode two, part three of our show with Mrs. Stacy Sepp. Thank you very much. Chill. And, you know, Dempty Anderson is always running around Till program, you know, yeah. um, and Till has been around for a minute and everything, but Iowa Vance, you know, they're up and coming and everything and they, they bought their program and recruited their employees. And this all happened literally like a days before I went for my appointment. And so he said, these wow. are your two options. You know, if you want to do the Till, you know, here's a list. There's like 50 some odd location, pulls it up. They're half of them are um, international. The other half are here in the States. And I looked at all of them, and the closest one, you know, is Aurora, Colorado, and that's where my grandparents lived, and it just made too much sense. And, you know, and I asked him, I was like, if this was like your kid, you know, what would you do? What you know, you you do? and so do the till, you know, and so I was like, yeah, no brainer. And so, um, you know, while I was waiting to go do that, you know, my doctor, you know, she gave me a dose of Keytruda because she was like, well, I can give you, you know, this, but, you know, we're not going to technically do that because that would do that so it didn't really mess around with my uh my washout period or anything and so started that whole program and you know thank god i did but you know it was by the time i had my resection and i was waiting to you know get admitted to the hospital that's when things got real bad with my conjunctivitis my eyes just went to crap and my knees swelled up and i wasn't moving and my appetite you know and i was declining so so bad and so you know we were do when did baseline scans and that's when they're like oh after all this eight you know 17 months or 60 you know now you have a metastasis to your brain even though it's one centimeter but this kicks you out and i was oh my it, God. that's when they what said is, now i'm <laughs> curious sorry. so what is your what is your mentality at that point of time when you know you'd been you'd already been through it you've gone through a lot of treatment and then you get news like that. What is what is your mindset? You know, what goes through your mind whenever whenever you get that uh, news? It's like time definitely freezes. It's like a ton of bricks. You know, you just literally feel so heavy, like like gravity. Like I don't, you know, it's it feels like you're on one of those planets where gravity pulls you so hard into the ground, and you just can't stand. It's just it's you feel so heavy. You know what I mean? It's just it's intense. Yeah. And then you know you you're. you're I got your family around you and they're patting you on the back and you can kind of see they're choking up and, you know, and stuff. And it was like, you know, for me, I was like, I was like, when they say, you know, my, you know, I want to call hospice and, you know, settle your affairs is because here's, here's what the other, they're like, look, here's what you would have to do. And of course I asked the question, but here's what you would have to do to get back into trial. Right. They were like, this was on, I'd scanned on December 6th. Um, I was, did that, and then I was on the doctor at the 10th going over the results. Okay. Um, the, <laughs> so, uh, no, the, isn't it crazy how those dates are burned into your brain? <laughs> yeah. Well, so especially because it's the, it's the end of the year, you know, and for the insurance and everything. Yeah. So, um, it's, uh, it, so there was a lot on the timeline. And so, um, in order to, 
stabilize it they said you know the best or the quickest and best the whole plan of action was you'd have to get the targeted you know brain radiation um it would be you know and you'd have to get a mask made and you'd have to get five doses and so but you have to get insurance approval you know obviously and you know no matter what like you know the very last day to scan is on december 24th because the trial is literally like ending you know you this is like um this is the fourth this is the fourth cohort you know there's no more people enrolled you know you were the last person that's to be dosed in this thing like yeah, you know, i feel the stress i feel the stress of it just you saying that between the end of the year and the trial yeah oh and so God. you know knowing all this um knowing all this is uh just like really intense and i'm like okay we got this timeline and it's like okay we got two weeks basically because it's the 10th and we've got to scan by the 14th you know and the world works in business days and weekends don't matter and so um it's uh you have to um get the approval and so before you can even get the mask made i mean i went and had my appointments and saw the doctor and so i knew the plan and everything but i could not physically put they couldn't put it on schedule to even make my mask until the approval was done all right and so yeah it took the six days it was on the 16th they finally got, I, you know, we finally got, you know, approval and, um, you know, I recall just like, because I was, I was bedridden at the time and I would call, I would either be laying in my bed or laying on my couch and my family would literally just come over and just sit with me. They would have somebody there like by seven in the morning and someone would be there till at least seven at night, you know, and like mm -hmm. I had a chair in my room and it was like, I would kind of be awake sometimes and sometimes wouldn't. You know, they tried to get me to eat and stuff and, you know, hang out with me. I just didn't want to be alone. I mean, like, I, yeah. I personally, I thought, you know, I just didn't want to die alone. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know if I was going to die at any time. And I didn't want to be alone. So, you know, my I could hear my mom just kind of like, you know, screaming on the phone with the insurance, but both crying at the same time. You know, you know, this is my son. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And stuff. And so the day we got the uh you know, everything approved was such a blessing. So I ended up, you know, oh, we got yeah. that, we got the mask made the next day. And then by that time, you know, there was only literally four days, you know, for, for, to do all the radiation, but I still needed five doses. So on the fifth day, they wow. gave me or the fourth day, they gave me, they gave me a double dose. So I, I still got all of my five doses in, but I did it in four days. And then Talk about like, which was like, skin like literally, and, and then, so that was on the 23rd. And then, yeah, I spent Christmas Eve that year. It was nice and sunny. And me and my mom, like, we went and I scanned and then got a smoothie and you know, went, went, went home and, and all that. And then after that, I had, I just kind of, I, I stayed at my mom's house and just, you know, spent from there until we on the, you know, the 2nd of January through the holidays, you know, just laid up chilling, um, trying to be comfortable, you know, people coming to visit and stuff until we flew to Colorado on the 2nd, had my appointment with Dr. Medina on the 3rd and, you know, um, uh, it turns out I had pseudo progression from the thing where it went up before it went down and, but it was enough to show that it worked and they let me in the trial. So, you know, I, that wow. was on the third, um, and I, uh, got admitted into the hospital on the eighth, got my pick line in and started my chemo depletion immediately. And then, you know, by the, uh, by the 15th, that's when they, they gave me my till. And then I, they followed it up by six doses of IL-2. And then, yeah, I got released on the 20th. And, like, I've, I've never done cancer treatment since. Wow. I mean, just that period of time from December 6th through when you started, when you flew out to Colorado and did all of that treatment. Yeah, that month. Like, that month. You know, you basically because I – so December 6th from scanning until entering the hospital on the 8th. You know, like, yeah, that's – a month to me is almost like like you know it's kind of like religious for me it's like man i don't want to commit to like you know if i'm if i was in the regular work world like i haven't worked that last like two weeks of the year since couldn't, before my diet yeah. yeah i just i can't yeah, do it couldn't. i just, mm -hmm. I just I, you know my mind you isn't know. you know i can't focus because right. i'm just well, so like that's like that's like my yeah. my like rebirth kind of time you know but literally my yeah. birthday is literally like i now kind of look at like january 15th is almost my birthday you know what I mean? Like that yeah. was the day that, oops, <laughs> that was the day everything changed. You know what I'm saying? Sure. You know, Absolutely. like, I mean, I've said this to you before, but you are, well, you're a walking miracle. That's for certain. <laughs> 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 I mean, your story is so intense. It's really, it's really amazing. And so, um, 
it's, you know, it's, it's inspiring for anybody who might be going like really going through it and they're not getting the news that they are hoping to get, you know, I think that that's another thing is just the, the message of don't ever give up no matter, no matter what. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I mean, if, if you're finally, nobody really thinks about it and they think they think about it, but if it's actually you, you'll, you'll, you'll make that decision. And it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you just let it, I mean, some people are okay with that, you know, um, and they feel fulfilled and, you know, it is what it is, but like, I wanted to live, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah. I just, I, I, I would do anything I had to do. I had a boss that had told me one time cause he had got cancer and, um, he had told me, he was like, I was so willing to do anything that I needed to do that if I needed to drink a gallon of gasoline to save my life. And that was what, you know, I would have done it, you know, and it's, it. that's mm -hmm. how an extreme of a, um, you know, example that was just so outlandish that he was using. He was like, it doesn't matter. It's like, dude, I would, you know, I would dig the deepest hole, like, you know, cross the longest river, you know what I'm saying? Like swim the yeah. biggest ocean, whatever. whatever. I'm whatever the biggest mountain. You. Yeah, you just, and if you die trying, at least you, you know, you're going to be known as you went out trying. And so, That's I mean, right. yeah, that was yeah. kind of the thing. And it was like, oh, you know, so it's, uh, it's part of the depression part was kind of realizing like, oh, oh shit, like I made it. Um, what do I do now? Um, yeah. you know, I, I feel the, the burden's heavy because I'm, I'm sure you feel this too, as you go and you like, you tell survivor stories and, um, it just kind of hits you as you get the reaction from people, especially those that are new in the diagnosis or that have, you know, gone through it completely because they're like, I totally get it. You know, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Or they're yeah. like, Oh my God, there's somebody that, you know, like that's, you know, they, they did it. You know what I'm saying? Like they made it mm -hmm. like, and you know, the, the clinical trial I went through, you know, for till, you know, it's uh lithium cell. I think I said it right. You know, it's going through um, FDA approval right now. They had filed their BLA for it like in March. And so there's like a 60 day thing for the FDA to look over it and so forth, you know, but the, they just put out a press release saying, you know, that it looks like it's still on plan for this year for it to be approved and That's it to great. be you know, um, out in the, um, uh, you know, available for patients, you know, as for metastatic melanoma, you know, you know and it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy because they don't, they didn't literally have a go-to for that. And it's also, you know, their, their platforms helping like, you know, cervical cancer and um, breast cancer, all these other, you know, diseases. It's like, dude, like this right here, you know, I, I'm not worried about it coming back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's the whole point about, you know, the treatment. It didn't go into remission. It's not there. What remission means is that, you know, it's, it's dormant. It's asleep. You know, it's there, but it's dormant. It's asleep. You know, what mine did is mine, basically, it got, it got dominated. It got, you know, some mercenaries yeah. went in there and just murked them. And it's straight yeah. up like, that's, that's, you know, it, <laughs> when I describe it to people, you know, that's what Tills is, is like, they take all your, you know, existing ones, they go and they engineer them. So they, you know, blow up into like the billions and stuff. And so there's so many of them that they, they just overwhelm, you know, mm -hmm. your deal, but they're, you got to think like, you know, they're Pac-Man and they're going mm -hmm. through the body and you're eating up the dots and the cherries and everything and stuff until they're gone. And then once they're yeah. gone, like the Pac-Man stay. But the cherries and all the little dots, they're gone. And if they even try to pop up, the little till will eat them before you could even know. So it's, I'm not worried about my cancer coming back. You know, I'm worried about other cancers in the world and stuff, you know, and other disease, you know, and so that's why I'm really trying to be healthy and everything now. I mean, I still take my juice plus. In fact, I just, uh, I just signed up as an affiliate, you know, I'm super excited, you know, so I mean, yeah. it's, that's great. Like, it's, it's just fruits and vegetables. And I'm like, man, like, you know, I, I can't. Um, for me, like that was kind of a, uh, it primed my system in a sense, just because it, I, uh, I was, you know, fruits and vegetables in itself. I mean, I, you know, I'm not like a salad dude all the time, just looking for that, you know, it's, it, it takes a lot of work to always have fresh fruits and vegetables. So, you know, right. it's, it's nothing else, but just a, a, a gap bridger, you know? And, uh, so I, uh, man, thank God for that. And, you know, but between doing these calls now and, um, and, you know, now I'm signed up as an affiliate with Juice Plus and I, uh, I'm going through like kind of some social media training. So um, I'm yeah. about to become like a real master. So watch out for that. But yeah, I love, I, uh, it. I love take, it. 
TikTok, you know, um, uh oh, like, here we go. Watch out. <laughs> Hey, my 12 year old son can help you with some TikToks if you need. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm going through social media training right now. And, uh, you know, and it's, there's a 30 day program and they're like, okay, first couple of days you do this. And then from wow. day, day, day three to day 10, you make a, you make a real a day. And then from that, you start doing this by, by day 20, you need to go live, you know, for your first time. And then I think oh it's, like an, it's, uh, yeah, it's like, a, it's like an Instagram but yeah, and so it's like, but you know, I I I have the content that I want to get out, but I just unless I well, do it, I execute. You know, I gotta, I just yeah. gotta do it. It's kind of crazy whenever the content is just from what you've lived. You know, then it becomes it's it's so much easier. It's just your life. This is this is this is what I lived. You know, I'm just talking about what I know inside and out now. Um, it's crazy. You know, two things that I wanted to say, number one is, um, I went through this period of time. I don't, it doesn't sound like you did, but when I was first diagnosed, I did not, I kind of knew like survival statistics and things like that. But I went through this period of time where I was paralyzed in fear from looking up anything having to do with melanoma. I didn't, I was terrified. I didn't want to look at st survival statistics. I didn't want to look at even just like information or um, just anything. And that lasts a while. And then I kind of, you know, stuck my toe in just a little bit and started looking, started learning. And then after, you know, I went through de the depression and everything and I was, I wasn't, I didn't think it was going to come back or progress or anything, but I just kind of got to this point where I felt more comfortable learning about it. And so by the time I was diagnosed or I, that I progressed to stage four, I knew so much more. I was a lot more comfortable with like diving in to figuring out if this happens, if I progress, then these are the treatment options available and so on. And then once I, you know, once I was stage four, that was it. I, I read every single thing that I could possibly read about this research study and that kind of treatment and what happened to this person, like everything. I just dove in and felt really comfortable with all of the terminology and, you know, that kind of stuff. So that whenever I was weighing my treatment options, I was, you know, well-versed on what these, all these different terms meant and, you know, the different options available to me. So that was kind of a weird journey for me, you know, at first, just not even wanting to look at it. And I think it's this strange psychological thing where you, for me, at least I didn't, for the longest time, want to identify myself as a cancer patient and all that that meant. I was like, you know, I had identified as being healthy and proactive yeah. with my health for so long yep. that I, it took a lot for me to be like, okay, this is real. <laughs> you better just get to a point of acceptance and then arm yourself with information you know, you know, you've always heard the phrase knowledge is power. And so right. I finally got to a point where I was like, I'm going to learn as much as I possibly can. And, um, you know, that's, that's incredible. Um, talking about pills being approved, FDA approved in the next, you know, however many days or months, that alone is really mind blowing from the time I was diagnosed in June of 2020 until now, there have been so many advancements in treatment. Oh and yeah. That's only oh, yeah. three, that's three years. And oh, the yeah. amount of new treatments that have been FDA approved or that are almost, you know, that are right on the, cu the cusp, like TILS, that I'm not sure if people realize how incredible that is that we have, you know, um, 12 years ago, there was one treatment that worked for about 20% of advanced melanoma patients. Ooh. Yeah. One. Uh, and the, the, um, cringes to think about. 
right? And then now we have so many more options and it's because of clinical trials and it's because of the research. And I mean, it's just miraculous that the research is going on to the extent that it is that we have these incredible people in the industry that are constantly doing all these things. I mean, they're like, in my mind, they're just like rock, absolute rock stars. So it's amazing to be a patient in this moment where we're part of these clinical trials that could literally be life-saving for people tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and plus they probably won't have to go through all the previous things that we had to go through to get to that point. They can just go straight to that. And then their quality of life, once they make it will be so much better. You know, I mean, like, it's yeah. just, that, that's what, that's what I want to try to prevent, you know, and by telling people, it's like, you know, uh, just, if they always ask me, I'm like, look, I tried all this stuff and it may or it may not work, but they won't know, but tills worked because that's how it's designed to do it. You know what I mean? And yeah. so if you're strong enough going into it, it, it should work. I well, mean, because of people like you though, you know, that, that this is, I mean, I, this is how I did it. You know, I looked up, you know, I actually, I did. And so when, when I got diagnosed, my, I got the phone call, you know, on a, uh, it was like a Thursday or Friday because I had a, my proctologist appointment on that Thursday, my, you know, Bucky took me to it, my stepfather. And that was because I had that week off from having that surgery from, uh, my lymph node being taken out because they thought it was a hernia. They thought it was a femoral hernia possibly, but they wouldn't know until they got in there. And when they got in there, my doc was like, yeah, I was a lymph node. I got clear margins. It's to pathology, you know? Um, and so I, I, I had my appointment, um, a few days later with proctologists, you know, like immediately at the appointment, you know, I dropped trial. He goes to look and he's like, Hey, you said you had surgery this week on that. He's like, what was your pathology? And I'm like, I hadn't come back yet. Sound of your voice was so, man. He's like, you know, cause it looks like cancer. And he's like, I can't, I'm not going to do anything until you find out what the pathology is. So get that. And so, yeah. you know, it was either that afternoon or the nap afternoon, but yeah, I got the call and it said, yeah, it's a malignant form of metastatic melanoma or something. And was um, that at that point, that must've just been like, well, he said, he said, it's, a, um, it's, it's, it's a, you know, uh, I think he, I, I'm not, I don't know if he actually used the word mucosal yet, but he said, you know, it's a malignant, it just said metastatic melanoma and was in the words and malignant metastatic melanoma, because, you know, it turns out, you know, my primary was the hemorrhoid and that other one was a metastasis. So that was automatically three, three B or whatever it is at that point, so, you know? And so, um, but he said two things to me. He said, um, first thing he's like, um, don't tell your family until you know more information, you know, because, uh, that, it's still, that, that's crazy. This is on a, well, he, well, he gave me a number for the oncologist and said, you know, call these people immediately. But he said, first, he said, don't tell your family, you know, because, and, and, uh, and he's like, don't Google it. And, um, wow. because, you know, it, he was it, you right know, on that it, second part, you know, and he said, and he's like, not until you have your appointment and you go in there and you figure out exactly what's going on and stuff, because, you know, he said, he, he warned me about how scary the internet was in terms of that and stuff. And so, you know, I am, um, you know, I, I, I don't recall necessarily, I mean, I probably did, you know what I mean? But I, it was very briefly and very quickly. And that might've been what flipped the switch for me to go Tyler Durden style, because I saw like what the statistic was and it said, and I think, a lot, I think it still is now. I mean, it's super sad, you know, but it's uh, when you get, if you get diagnosed with metastatic mel- or mucosal melanoma and you know it's definitely you know if the head, head and neck takes up 50 percent of it but you know the other 25 and 25 is you know anal rectal or you know, vaginal or vulva and down below you know either one of those two areas is a lot more you know mean that you know from what I, we've come to find you know than up above and uh oh, wow. the statistic was i think maybe 14 percent to make it five years and then um at, like once you get diagnosed or, or once it becomes um metastatic um you know like into your you know after after it leaves your lymph nodes and it goes to stage four you got probably nine months and so um and i think that was one of the things that like flipped the switch and i you know i think I, that was the, that, that's why i flipped the switch and everything but my you know but yeah i mean so I, I stayed away from Google after that, but you know, yeah. I told yeah. My oh, that's another thing I was going to say is um, when I went, when I was going to start treatment and you kind of mentioned something like this too. Um, I remember being like, like you said, flip the switch. You're just going into the mode, you know, yeah. you're going into like, you're going into fight club. Um, 
I remember being like, you know what? I don't want to be, I'm not going to be on my um, Facebook support groups. I'm not going to read anything on Google. I'm going to go into like as much as realistic, as much as realistic, as much as it is realistic, I'm going to go on like an all positive diet where it's like nothing negative coming in, nothing negative coming into my body and nothing negative coming into my mind. I'm just going to like go on as much pot, like all positive, all positive, laser focused, right? laser focused. I'm not letting any of that stuff in. I'm not letting any of the what ifs in. I'm just going into, you know, this mode of like, I've got to, I've got to just fight and I have to get that's, all that negative poison out. That's the belief factor. That's literally what that is. It's like, if it's the belief factor, you believe so much that in yourself that, you know, you know, and it's like, once you commit to that and understand that it doesn't matter what anybody else says or thinks, because, you know, they're not going to understand what they don't understand until you show them. And so right. even, even during or the camp, I'm still trying, I'm still, yeah. And, 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 you know, I still feel like I'm doing that now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. what I'm trying to do it myself or my life doesn't make sense to anybody because they don't personally know anybody in our family circle. That's, that's doing that and being, make it doing a thing about that. You know, the whole thing is still, well, you know, to do the traditional thing that's always been done, you know, until, until you live it, you can't, you just can't fully understand, you know, and, and I appreciate every single person who's supported me and, you know, everything along the way, but it, it is really special to meet other survivors who, you know, it's funny. We just are like, Hey, did you do Ipi Nevo? Did you do, you know, we just yeah, yeah, yeah. All, the, all the terms. And People, uh, what? <laughs> exactly. Did but you, did, really did you get, did you get gene tested? You know, were you breath positive? What's the, no, 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 no. The ma- you know. But like to sit down, I think you and I said talk scans, you know, and yeah, we just immediately we're like, hey, we're throwing our, around all these terms and just to have these people who well, that's right. We sat next to like, each other during that. People. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. People. It's really special. It was really hey, cool. Chris, I hate to do this because I feel oh, like no, no, yeah, all day, but I have a most definitely have to like go to. Oh, yeah, um, no, it's all good. Thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate you, and uh, let's oh. be in touch. Let's do this again here soon. I love this. This was fun. Anytime, Chris, I would love to. It was a blast. I would love to do it again, and I just love what you're doing and appreciate it so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, most definitely. All right, all right. Soon. you take okay. care. Okay, bye. bye.